Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're not quite on the hour yet, so we might let a few more people come in. I can see the, the numbers trickling up. Welcome, everyone. I am very excited for this session. I'm sure everyone else is. Oh, great. Yeah, guys, pop a message in the chat box. Let us know where in the world you are joining us from. Um, and also, if you have any questions about product management, throw them in the chat box. Actually, we have a Q&A box to the right. Um, that's the place to pop the best questions. But in the chat box, let us know where you are joining us from. This is very cool. This is very Andela. We have people from Ghana, Kenya, Turkey, Nigeria, Egypt, Tunisia. Amazing. Welcome everyone. Dubai. Very cool. Cape Verde. Oh, beautiful. Very nice. I'm in Dublin in Ireland at the minute. Okay, very good. And I know that Ahmed, our panelist, is in lovely London, so he's he's not too far from me. Where else is everyone joining us from? Accra, Rwanda. Welcome, welcome. Botswana. Amazing. I love this. Keep it coming. Let us know where you're joining us from. As the, yeah, more people are still joining us. Oh man, welcome, Hussein. This is very cool. We're delighted to have you all join us. Very, very cool. So, should we we'll kick it off? Um, for those of you who don't know me, you probably don't. I'm quite new to Andela myself. My name is Nicola and I am the community manager at Andela. So I'm very lucky. My job and the team that I work on support our talent network of digital talent. So engineers, designers, product managers all around the world. We help them have a fantastic experience as members of Andela's talent, talent network. Um, and part of that is uh, wonderful webinars and workshops and content like this. Um, so I'm very happy to be uh, facilitating our conversation with Ahmed today. So what is this workshop? This workshop is for anyone who's interested in product management. You might already be a product manager. You might be interested in getting into the industry. Um, our speaker, Ahmed el Sharkazi is going to cover the history of the field, how it originated in the 1930s, and the history of it over the last decade, how it's evolving, and most importantly, what the future of product management looks like. Where are the jobs going to be in the future and what are they going to look like? So I, for one, am very excited to learn something new today. Let's have a quick look through the agenda of what we're going to cover. Next slide. There we go, fantastic. So today's agenda, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a brief run through of Andela. For anyone who's joining us who's new to Andela, wants to know what we do and how we support digital talent and clients all around the world, I'll give you a quick run through of what we do. And then I will hand over for the majority of this webinar to our panelist, pal, there we go, panelist, Ahmed el Sharkazi, who's going from Knowledge Officer, who's gonna give us our talk today. And then we will have a Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions, pop them into the Q&A box at the end and we'll make sure we get through as many as we possibly can. I'm sure there'll be loads of great questions. And then let's see, next slide there. Okay, great. So let's talk about Andela. Andela is a talent marketplace that connects companies with vetted remote technologists in emerging markets. So we have been around since 2014. We're backed by top venture capitalist firms, as you can see there, from SoftBank, Spark Capital, um, Google, Chan Zuckerberg uh, Initiative, and others. And what they do is they help us to fulfill our mission to connect brilliance with opportunity. So at Indela, we believe that brilliance is evenly distributed, but opportunity isn't. So we work to support digital talent in over 80 countries around the world to match them to professional opportunities that they can do remotely from their own homes. So next slide. So just a quick sample of some of the global clients that we work with. We couldn't list them all here. I'm sure there are many global brands there that many of you will recognize. Personally, off the top of my head, I recognize BBC, Cloudflare, GitHub are huge partners of ours. And what we do is we match digital talent with roles within organizations like these on a daily 
basis. We have wonderful clients all around the world. Some of them can be small startups and some of them can be um, global multinational companies. They're very diverse. So let's talk about why Indela. What does Indela do for both our talent and our clients? So at Andela, for digital talent, so for software engineers and product managers and the like around the world, we offer long-term opportunities with global companies, as we said, access to our global talent community. So that's where I come in. And compensation and career coaching, as well as financial and professional flexibility. All win wins there. And then for our clients, we offer qualified talent so they don't need to do multiple rounds of interviews. The speed and efficiency of our onboarding process is world class. We provide manageable costs and talent available in their own time zones. And we provide diverse talent from across Africa, Latin America, Europe and beyond. Um, next slide, please. OK, so just to give a sample of what the Andela experience looks like for our engineers. Our placements are long-term. So the average engineer will stay on an engagement for over 18 months. Our placements are full-time. So engineers will work a minimum 40 hours per week, just as normal. And they will join the core engineering team of their clients. Um, there'll always be a five hour overlap with their client partners. So there's, um, it's perfect for uh, collaboration. And they'll join the Slack teams, they'll join the meetings, and they'll be integrated into the teams of the clients that they work with. Next slide. We'll do a quick overview of our assessment process for engineers. So it's a three-step process. It's very, very straightforward. The first step is an English proficiency exam. So that's an online test. Um, and it's a combination of uh, AI-based tests and uh, online coding exams to make sure that you meet our criteria. At Andela, we recruit the top 1% of engineers around the world. So that's the first step to identifying our talent. After that, you'll go to a technical interview with one of our recruiters. They are all fantastic. Once you pass that and you enter Andela's talent network, you will work with us to optimize your profile and then we'll match you using um, AI onto a placement with one of our clients. We'll find the perfect role for you based on your skills, um, the length of your career and your areas of expertise. So to give you an example, at the minute, Andela is placing engineers all around the world. Um, we have jobs that we're looking to fill in Android, iOS, um, DevOps engineers are very popular, React, Java, Node.js, Python, and data engineers. We have loads of roles that we're filling for those engineers at the minute. But in addition to that, particularly from January of next year, we have lots of roles for product managers and also UX designers and researchers that we're going to be filling from the new year. So if you want to work with us and you want to get involved, make sure that you join Andela. There'll be an email following up after this webinar with lots more information. So if you are a product manager or a product owner or you're um, interested in the field, definitely get in touch with us go through the next slide okay as I mentioned there at the minute there will be a Q&A at the end of this webinar there's a Q&A box to the bottom of zoom feel free to throw your questions for Ahmed in there um, and we will cover those at the end as many as we can so on to the main show on to our workshop Ahmed El Sharkezi is the founder and CEO of Knowledge Officer and he is going to be leading our webinar today Ahmed is going to shed light on the history of product management and how the career has evolved over the last decade. He'll share his expertise gained from meeting hundreds of senior product managers and VPs around the world. And he'll share the experience he's gained through Knowledge Officer and how they have trained over a thousand product managers in recent years. So he's an absolute expert on this subject. Ahmed will discuss upcoming product management trends and will also detail how companies and professionals can stay resilient in order to thrive. So without further ado, I will wrap up now and I will hand over to Ahmed. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Nicola, for the amazing intro and um, thanks a lot for um, Andela for the kind invitation to this, uh, to this talk, um, talk and webinar. Uh, it's a very um, interesting topic to me and um, will definitely sh shed the light more on why this is personally interesting to me as well, beside actually what we do at Knowledge Officer. 
and happy to basically see a lot of people in the chat already talking about potential questions for career transition. So hopefully that can be a relevant, basically, a boost to the next steps that they will take. Um, we'll try to make this as actionable as possible. Uh, there isn't a lot of theory here in this presentation at all. It's not going to be long. We are going to cover everything potentially in 30 to 40 minutes. I will try also to take on questions a little bit in the middle if, if basically there is a fit so that basically we can keep it as interactive as possible in this like fully online, basically remote um, uh, format. Um, so yeah, I will, I will start sharing the screen and if you can just um, confirm, Nicola, that you can see it and then we can potentially make a start. I Perfect, so hopefully you can see my screen now. I can see you are sharing your Google Slides. Um, yes. Want to pop on present view? Yeah, yeah I, will, I, will, I will just make Beautiful. sure before I do it. <laughs> okay, so Thank that's you. now on full screen, right? You are. Perfect. Thanks again, Nicola. Thanks for the intro. Um, so yeah, today we are going to talk about um, product management as, as a sort of like the major topic of this setting, uh, but we are going to cover also like a little bit about careers and about basically career switches and I will shed the light a little bit um, in a few slides about why this is important and why this is relevant as well to this topic uh, specifically. Um, as Nicola have, um, have shared, we will talk about also some um, elements related to the future trends that might affect basically existing product manager, aspiring product managers. We'll talk about the history of product manager and why, it, um, when it originated and how it evolved over the, basically the past years. Um, and also we talk a little bit about some misconceptions about product management and what is product management really and what's not potentially product managers. The, the, the reason for covering a lot of these topics um, is basically with the anger and the mindset of helping you navigating the choice of whether I could basically fit in this career if I'm basically thinking of making the switch. And I guess a lot of the people in this uh, basically um, webinar is actually looking and thinking about this kind of career choice. And it's also relevant for existing uh, product managers because it refreshes some of the concepts that we need to master as we grow our career in product management. And it also addresses some of the um, uh, topics that might be interested in companies who are basically thinking about growing their basically product management team, upskilling their existing teams, and what are some of the trends that make product management very, very exciting and making basically product man managers one of the very um, hot um, uh, job vacancies for a lot of companies big and small around the world. Um, so first I'll start with basically why I'm here today, basically, as I, as I said, um, uh, this is topic is very personal to me as well, because at some point in my life, I've made a transition to product management. So I've navigated this route in my life at some point, but also the but part of the reason why this is personally interested to me is because along the journey over the past, maybe like 15, uh, 15 years or so, I've navigated multiple career switches. Like I remember back when I was 15 or 14 years old, I was very, very interested in development and coding. So I've been going around into a lot of training centers, uh, learning um, PHP, learning C++, and getting my hands dirty into actually this like programming and, and coding fields. And then I went into sales. I was very interested actually in trying new different things. So although like I got into a uh, computer and system engineering uh, college and I was studying basically uh, computer science, uh, at the very first year I was doing sort of like a part-time job as a salesperson doing completely different things, going like outside of my comfort zone by far and talking to basically CEOs of companies, trying basically to sell them sort of like sponsorship packages for events and seminars and stuff like that. And basically throughout my years at college, I've done uh, loads of internships, um, mostly within small and medium sized uh, startups, mostly on basically uh, web development and, and back end development to train and, and basically uh, polish my skills in this field. And then I graduated back in 2012. Uh, I was basically very excited about this career of software engineering. I was a kind of a geeky engineer who wanted to basically learn a lot about how things work behind the scenes and getting my hands dirty even into like infrastructure topics and try everything in the stack. And that's why um, after basically getting um, into uh, multiple jobs as, as a software engineer and then a, a senior software engineer, I went into machine learning. So I've basically worked in a couple of jobs as a machine learning developer. I've published a research paper on basically text classification of Twitter basically stream and stuff like that. I went into teaching in the university and then basically I found my passion within product management. And this is was the last sort of like um, um, uh, step in my journey. Before 
I came into Knowledge Officer and, and, and my role now is the CEO and co-founder of Knowledge Officer where we are helping thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around the world navigating this kind of career switch decision in, my, in, in their life. Uh, we are helping them find the shortest path to basically employment within their dream roles and we are helping also companies um, grow and retain their competitive force in what we are referring to as hit careers or high in demand tech careers. And product management is one of those basically careers of our focus. We have been championing basically this uh, track over the past three years. As Nicola have said, we've been through uh, multiple basically um, iteration of our product and meeting thousands of product managers around the world and also like onboarding a lot of mentors who have been helping us in this journey. So we might know a little bit of, uh, of things about basically this kind of career switch and I might be able to shed the light a little bit about some of the journeys uh, and some of the learnings I've, uh, I've had in my journey making this multiple transitions in my career till I landed basically my current uh, position. So let's talk first about career choices given that whether you are jumping into a new career, whether it's product management or whether it's actually software engineering or whatever it is, there are a few points which I think you need to think about, which are career agnostic. It wouldn't matter a lot whether we are talking about product management, we are talking about software engineer, etc. So most of the presentation will talk about product management, but I wanted to set basically a few points at the beginning because there is some basic principles that you need to consider before you actually think about what career you're going through. And this is basically a very simple framework that I've developed myself over the year and something that I keep asking my question. It is basically passion, opportunities, capabilities. You are always thinking about basically what are you passionate about? What keeps you basically uh, busy during the day? What keeps you awake at night? What is the driver basically that keeps you very energetic while doing what you are doing day to day? I believe in the that the fact that you need to always look for intersection between your current passion and what you do day to day otherwise your growth potential will be limited i'm always basically looking for exponential growth in people career this is something that is very hard to be achieved but it is possible to at least look forward to basically get to this level of exponential growth and it is impossible to do it if you are not passionate about what you are doing day in and day out and the second thing is basically your opportunities. What is available around you? Being a little bit pragmatic about basically where you are in the world, what kind of basically roles are basically mostly dominant in your country, what's actually trending these days, what would uh, provide you with the most economical, basically uh, beneficial um, opportunities that would basically help you um, um, live a better life in some sense. Um, and that's actually why I'm very, very excited about what Andela is doing, because it's opening a whole new wide set of opportunities to people around the world. You could be basically based in Egypt or Nigeria or Kenya and working for Twitter in, in the US or the UK. And that's an amazing dream for many people and something that I'm really passionate about uh, their mission over the past years. And the last basically factor is your capabilities. You need to also be realistic about basically the fact that each role and each career you choose has a set of like critical skills, I would call them critical skills or hard skills that, that are a bit hard to acquire. They're not impossible to acquire. I believe in the, the possibility of learning any basically skill on, in the world. But if you're looking about something that you can potentially master or potentially switch into within six to 12 months, there are some critical skills that might be hard to basically gain in six to 12 months if you don't have any of them at all. And you are always look, looking to basically optimize or maximize the intersection between the three. This is basically the dream career that you are trying to place in the middle. You are trying to look for the intersection between your passion, the opportunities that's, that's basically available to you and the set of capabilities and skills that we have. Today, we are going to shed the light more about basically what is the set of core skills and capabilities that a lot of companies are looking for when it comes to hiring product managers. And maybe basically if you are passionate about product management and if the opportunities around you are available and I can say for sure that this career is really, really on the rise almost in every country on the planet. And that's why Andela, although Andela has been sort of like focusing a lot on software engineering roles over the past years, Andela is already opening basically opportunities for product management. And I'm sure you have heard the news and you will get to see as well when, when they announce the application form at the end of the session. So definitely there are opportunities. The passion is up to you. It's different from a person to another. The capability is something that you need to assess and that will potentially give you some uh, basically tips and frameworks that would help you assess whether you have what it takes to be basically a product manager or not. 
let's first talk about some misconceptions because some of these misconceptions are creating false barriers to get into product management, which I want to really shatter. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about product management and I want everyone on the planet who can basically master this role to have a fair game and a fair opportunity. So before we get into some of the misconceptions, I want to basically fire up a quick poll to see what do you believe are misconceptions among basically the, the, the choices that you will see in the poll. So if you don't mind a team, if you can just fire up the first poll, that would be great. And I will leave a few seconds for people to vote. Yes, which of the following, actually, if you can just answer the first um, question first, which of the following is a misconception about product management? Is it that they have technical background, they must have technical background? Is it product manager is a senior position? Is product manager is a business position? Companies will only hire product managers with experience or all of the above. What do you believe any of these five choices um, is a, a misconception? Okay, let's give it. Um, so the, the admins, whenever you feel there is enough basically votes, let us basically see the results and uh, get surprised. There's some very interesting results here. That's great. Yeah. I would love to see basically a... It's the bars are moving <laughs> um, as everyone's feeding in. It's great. Um, I know personally, a lot of these misconceptions are ones that I've had um, for years. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what everyone else thinks. And by the way, for some reason, I can see these bars from my end, Nicola. So if, if you if, if this is actually like done or ended, please let me know. I can see the, the only the question. So maybe I'm not looking or I maybe I'm we're nearly done. Almost everyone has voted so far. And there's a few more still coming in. If anyone wants to vote, we'll give you five seconds left to, to pop in a vote and then we'll end the poll. Oh, you're nearly there. Okay, well, we end it. Let's see what the answers are. Perfect. Okay. If I share results, can everyone see them? Yes, I can see the results on my end now. Okay. So we have 54% voting for all the above. We have 16% voting that product manager must have a technical background and almost like equal percentage between senior and business and 11% for hiring um, only product managers with experience. That's great. That's actually not, not a, a basically a, a result that was going to surprise me. Let's go through some of the misconceptions. And at the end of the, at the, end of the, the next slide, you'll be able to know which of the answers is correct. So the first misconception is yes, product managers must have a technical background. This is a false basically misconception that has been around for years. I keep repeating this for many people. I know a lot of people are advocating for cases where product managers have succeeded and flourished without a technical background. But basically for many reasons, some of it we'll answer today um, when we go through the history of how the product manager role actually originated. There is a still a misconception that for you to become a product manager, you need to learn coding, you need to have a technical background, you need to speak the language of the software engineer. This is definitely a misconception. And there are actually companies on the far end, they hire product managers only with basically business background. And it's a company most of us basically know, Facebook. A lot of the product manager, actually more than 50% of the product manager at Facebook have business background, whether business, marketing, sales, etc. On the other end, Google is on the far basically extreme. So most of the product managers at Google have technical backgrounds. And this is basically just the name of two of the giants in the software world. But there are definitely many, many companies that would hire a product manager without a technical background. And there are many companies as well that would require a technical background. So it's not a must have, but it depends on the company and the role. The second is product manager is a senior position. Again, a very basically um, uh, a common misconception that you believe that product manager is not a role that you can get within the first like two or three years of, of your career. You believe that product manager is about management. So basically you are managing people, you are leading people. Again, you could be a very junior product manager just straight out of college. You could be within a huge product organization with hierarchies and categories of 
heads of products, VP of products, director, etc. So product manager can be senior, can be junior. It doesn't have basically a seniority as part of the title. Product manager is a business position or a technical position. Both are incorrect. It can be either of the two. Again, one of the things that we'll go through is basically how the role started as more of like an end-to-end -end position covering a 360 view of the business, both on actually the product development lifecycle and also the go-to basically strategy for delivering this product to consumer and how the role have shifted over the years a little bit towards the product development side. This is where we got most of the misconception about the software product manager or the technical product manager. But reality is as a product manager, you could do both. In some companies, you could do either of the two. And in a lot of companies, you would do both. So there isn't a classification of whether business or technical in product management. Companies will only hire product manager with experience. Again, um, this is not true. Uh, a lot of companies nowadays are looking for fresh product managers straight out of basically business colleges, engineering colleges. A lot of um, companies are basically looking to reskill some of their teams into product management roles. We have seen loads of cases like this happening. It's not basically that every company would look for a product manager with X years of experience in product management, but it is basically one of the very few um, like rising struggles. Like a lot of people who are breaking into product manager and management for the first time, find it hard to land their first role. As soon as they land their first role, they just fly. Basically, it's very, very easy. As soon as you have the title of a product manager, even for six months or a year, you basically get the next role so easily as a product manager. But I've seen many people, and this is actually what we do at Knowledge Officer. We take people on, on the journey of actually breaking into product management from engineering, from marketing, from sales, and we help them with a the job after the graduation. So I've seen this happening um, live in front of our eyes. So it is doable. So based on this, all of the above is actually the right answer. 54% are winners. The rest, you will get the next chance in the next fall. So don't be sad, and hopefully you'll get it right the next time. History of product management. So this is very um, important, basically, topic to cover. And we'll cover it, basically, um, in a few slides, just for you to understand like how we got to know some of the main concepts we talk about product management as if it is basically taken for granted, like get out of the building, lean, uh, Kanban, uh, agile, how these concepts even originated, and why we have a little bit of a confusion whether product management should be basically technical or business, and what is the limitation of the role of the product manager. So hopefully the history will make it a little bit clear why as humans over the past like 70 years, we have been uh, sort of like uh, chattered between the two uh, views. So let's fire up the second question first, and then we can go into the next slide. Okay, so we have actually answers already. So we have 1930, 24%, the same for 1980s. We have 36% going for 2005, and we have 16% for 1950. Okay, so definitely that wasn't as right as the first basically uh, guess of people. So the reality is product management started in 19, basically 30s. So specifically in 1931, when Neil McCroy, one of the executives at PNG, have wrote a very, very famous memo, which is basically sort of like the Bible for both brand management and product management. And he was advocating um, for his company to hire what he called as brand men, like people who are responsible, not just basically for the product life cycle within PNG, but also for the packaging, the advertising, um, reviewing the copy, talking to customers, understanding why the demand is actually low in some company, in some geographies or districts and why it's high in some districts. Uh, this was the beginning of actually the concept of brand management, which actually became product management along the years. Um, if you see basically the memo and you'll get to see it also online um, and you'll get to read, um, it's only like three pages, but it is actually very, very condensed and um, contain a lot of um, good information. You will see that this role in our own understanding now is a mix of product management for the people who see it as basically more of a technical product, basically development role and marketing communication management or basically brand management. But this was the beginning of actually the, ori the origin of uh, the role of the product manager. And then later on, Neil basically was um, advising at Stanford and he inspired two of his students who were basically the co-founders of HP, Bill and Dave. 
um, and they basically went into building um, HP with the concept of product organization. So they were splitting each product within HP into almost like a separate organization. They are autonomously running their end-to-end -end product development life cycles, uh, life cycles together with the sales and the marketing. And these people and this company have coined and started basically the uh, customer advocacy within the role of the product managers. And here you can see that they were always pushing people to stay as close to the customers, take the customers into consideration with every decision. And they were always basically pushing for people to get out of the building and basically test the products at this point, still, the product managers were doing things end to end. So they were building the product and they were also like doing the market research, talking to the customers on the front line. So they were spanning all the activities end to end. And quite interestingly, and this is the year when things became really, really exciting and interesting for product management and where we stand now on a solid infrastructure and a lot of concepts that we are talking about uh, post the world war with Toyota production systems when Toyota basically were looking for cost reduction due to a lot of the um, economical factors that um, um, happened after the, uh, the World War. And they were developed what we call as just-in-time manufacturing or just-in-time basically um, a production, which is basically the iterative development um, life cycle that we are talking now about being looking at MVPs. Now we call it MVP, they didn't call it MVP at the beginning, but basically building fast, shipping every day and continuously shipping, all these kind of things. Uh, they had two very, very strong um, uh, concepts, which one is called um, uh, Kaizen, which is referred to the continuous innovation uh, within the business to drive more basically business opportunities. And they had something called Jinshi Jinbatsu. I'm not sure if I, uh, I'm pronouncing it right in, in Japanese, but basically this was in English, like go find it yourself, sort of like it, it was um, a, a slogan within the company to basically advise everyone to bring back things into first principles. So always basically challenge the status quo. And if they want to make sure how things are working and if they want to test something, they need to test it while it's actually working. They need to go and talk to the people who are using it. Again, a lot of the uh, good concepts that we are referring to as best practices for product managers and within this uh, period, within 1950, product managers were also like in charge of the whole process. They were basically business people. They understand pricing strategies, and they were also like responsible for the shipment and the product lines. And this is where it become completely different. So with OnTweet, with basically Microsoft, the process of building the product itself become a little bit more sophisticated. They were innovating beyond basically what was the world capable of doing before. And this is where they started to split the, uh, the process of product development from product shipping or product production. This is where they start to see product managers responsible only for talking with engineers, responsible only for basically managing the product development. And there are people who are responsible for marketing and sales and till now, Microsoft has a lot of product managers with technical background. Actually, most of the product managers of Microsoft have technical background and a lot of basically the, 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 um, the areas beyond the product development is governed by program managers, by marketing people, by brand people, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So maybe because basically um, Microsoft is uh, where our memory um, can remember back in 1970, this is where a lot of product managers and a lot of companies have adopted the, the, the role and have looked at it as basically more of a technical role and have always hired for people with technical background or have always basically had this misconception that product managers need to have a technical background, but truly is the role is, is bigger than that. The role is way bigger than basically only managing the product development life cycle. And we'll see a lot of now some of the um, concepts and some of the definitions of how people can see it and what is product management today in the eyes of many, many people around the world, whether companies or institutions or basically famous consultants and, and product managers. So this is basically some of the description. We won't get into reading all of it. I'll try actually to see with the team as well if you can uh, distribute the slides. But you'll see um, this is uh, 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 the description or the definition of Wikipedia an organization function with new product development, business justification, planning, verification, forecasting, pricing. So basically it encompasses every stage in the product life cycle and not just the development part of it. And 
another basically definition is the PM is like the executive chef of their product. They don't own the restaurant, just like they are not the CEO of the company they work for. I like this one really, really, because it actually shattered this idea of the product managers are the CEO of their products. No, we are not the CEOs of our products. It's quite different. Uh, we always develop through the hands of other people. Uh, we basically lead by influence and not by authority. There are many, many things that differentiate the product manager and, and the CEOs, but it is one of the uh, common misconceptions uh, as well. Uh, product management is about discovering a product that is valuable, usable, and feasible. Again, very, very uh, strong, basically, definition. And there are tons of definitions out there. So you wouldn't get bored reading what's product management uh, out there on the internet. But one of the definitions that I liked, and maybe I've tweaked it a little bit to my own, basically, experience is, as a product manager, your role is to help your team and your company ship the right product to the right customers. What I like about this is that every single word that I highlighted, I highlighted here has basically a deeper meaning than actually what it really appears on the screen here. So the word help, because you are a facilitator, you don't basically give orders, you influence people because you are not doing the things with your hands. You influence people to do what you believe is right and you basically own the why and the what in the company. Um, and you work through basically the hands of your team. You don't focus only on the product and your team, you focus on the bigger picture. What is this company is about? And what is the business strategy that I'm trying to basically um, uh, build um, uh, upon? Um, you work a lot on basically shipping activities, so you deliver a lot. And this is one of the mindsets which I like about the best product managers. The best product managers are not just visionary people who basically write plans. No, they, are, they know that basically for them to execute, they need to execute and they need to learn. And then there is a time for strategy and a time for execution. You always think about basically what is the right product. So a lot of activities are around basically prioritization, around market discovery, around interviewing users. And you always think about what is best for your customers. You basically hire customers and you fire customers. You know that you need to understand who is the right customers for the value proposition that you stand behind. This is one of the um, definitions that I like myself, and I feel it has basically a lot of the merits of the product management. Um, one thing is also you need to look at product management as basically a way to fill in the gaps within an organization. So that's why the definition is different, and that's why we need to live with this fact. Like as a company with basically 30 employees, the gaps and the challenges would be different than basically when we are 300. A company which is developing a very sophisticated AI product has different challenges than a company which is basically in the ride hailing or the ride trading space. This has more of operational basically challenges. So you are always going after the big challenge within the company. You are filling the gaps. And even as you go in the company and as the company gets mature and gets developed, your role will, will change as well. As a product manager, your role can be basically um, decomposed into four main areas. And I will share now some of the frameworks as well. This is where it gets to, is this something that I want to do? Is this basically within my capabilities? We're talking here about the core skills and what defines a good product manager and what defines your role in the future if you were aspiring to be a product manager or upskilling an existing role. You have four main quadrants. The first one is mainly like product discovery activities. So you are looking to identify and analyze big problems. You are doing market research, you are interviewing users, you are getting out of the building, trying to figure out what problem you are trying to solve and what's the potentially the right solution for it. The second basically quadrant here is basically on the product delivery side. You are shipping great products. You basically build with the software engineers. You work in agile um, iterative development. You know what it takes to actually get the, get the product into the customer hands. Here is actually on the business side of things. So you know how to build defensible businesses. You understand about go-to-market strategies. You understand, you understand about pricing. You understand about positioning. You understand about growth. These are areas you need to champion as you also become more mature and senior as a product manager. And lastly, empowering and lead teams. As I said, you are always basically leading by influence and not by authority. You are always basically developing things through the hands of others. That's why things like communication skills 
are basically very, very um, a must have for a product manager, whether written or verbal communication. You can basically um, roll um, as a role, role basically and master the product management role without having good communication and good leadership skills that you need to develop and polish around the years. Another good framework that um, uh, Reforge have basically published um, um, a few years back is uh, basically these kind of like four quadrants, like you have the customer insight, you have the product execution, you have influencing people and you have the product strategy. So those are the four quadrants where you need to basically master and you give yourself sort of like a rating, whether you, you need focus on this, you are on track or you outperform and you look at your shape at the end. They have a very nice framework where this kind of shape is tell you, are you a technical product manager? Are you a growth product manager? What shape of product manager are you? This is basically the question that they answer with this framework. Again, going into the deeper sort of like set of skills and rating yourself, you will get to see whether most of the areas are needs focused, most of the areas are on track, where you are, what's your shape and whether this shape qualify you for basically the passion that you have. So again, weighing passion against its capabilities or not. Another good framework that um, Roman uh, Pitchler, who is actually a, a famous consultant in the US have also published, he has six core areas or six core knowledge you need to master as a product manager and six supporting knowledge. They are sort of like secondary knowledge. The six core are the ones inside this circle uh, inside. You have the strategy and market research. You have the vision and leadership. You have the product lifecycle management, user experience, product roadmap, and business modeling. So those are the six core areas in Roman's basically vision um, or a lens that you need to master. And you have also these kind of like supporting uh, knowledge that you need to have. Again, you can go through this and rate yourself how much you know about these things, where you need to develop, because the road to actually learn product management is almost like infinite. So you need to master some of the basically core skills to an extent that would qualify you to the job market where you are. And then along the way, you would get the rest. You definitely are not going to get everything in the first year. And you are not trying to master everything to be able to break into product management. But looking at basically what's available in the market, and looking at basically the, um, the necessity of the companies that are hiring would give you a little bit of a perspective of what which of these uh, core areas you need to develop first. We covered what's product management. Maybe it's time to cover what's not product management as well, uh, because uh, it is important to actually look at the, the anti-patterns and what would define a good product manager versus a bad product manager. Good product manager will basically takes full responsibility and accountability. When things go wrong, you are the one in charge. You take the accountability and you take the hit. And bad product managers are always making excuses because you're not actually building the thing. So you can, the easiest thing is to blame the engineer. The easiest thing is to blame marketing, is to blame sales. You basically need to uh, on, uh, do uh, these things if you were to basically take bigger role because the more you go up in the ladder and the more you get senior the more the responsibility and the accountability would be bigger and bigger you are almost having as equal um, accountability as the ceo in some sense especially if the company is sort of like a product driven and product minded company good product managers would focus on the what and the why bad product managers would waste a lot of time thinking about the how and the when they are thinking deadlines and delivery and they are thinking project management a little bit or they are trying to get more into the details of how these things are built. So they are thinking basically on things that they shouldn't basically master while most of the product manager would always basically rem remind their teams of what they are building and why they are building what they are building. Good product managers defines their job. This is a very important one because I see a lot of like um, basically um, um, product managers who are um, uh, not happy with the fact that this job could be intangible. It might be not well defined within an organization. I mean, this is not the same as basically a mature, a mature organization or an immature organization. The fact about product management is that there is a lot of weight on the product manager himself defining the gaps in order to fill those gaps. You remember when we said you are filling the gaps? So you are a core basically element of defining your job you are not going to be told what to do. 
good product managers build bulletproof solutions. They are very good at actually building quality products that basically customers love and basically advocates for, while bad product manager would be reactive people who are spending their days basically putting off fire. And lastly, as a product manager, you focus on revenue and customers. You don't focus only on basically building the product behind the scenes, while bad product managers would focus on how many features, how many products can we develop, um, thinking day in, day out about product roadmap and not thinking of the business basically aspects and the customer aspect of uh, your job. Lastly, future trends. So where this is going, we talked about the history, we talked about the skills, and we talked about basically some of the things that you uh, should avoid uh, as well doing if you were to uh, be um, an, an expert and a good product manager. Some of the future trends that um, I have seen talking to many uh, product managers around the world, and um, it's actually uh, reflected in many um, 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 reports um, by famous uh, product um, organizations is COVID have accelerated many things. One of the things that it has accelerated also how Consumers are educated on what's good and what's bad, and the bar of quality that they basically accept products um, within. So as a product manager or as companies now, a lot of companies are winning or losing based on the quality of their products. Products are actually a very good, um, a very strong element uh, um, of the success of any companies nowadays. And this has put enormous pressure on many companies about hiring product managers across the board. Um, this two years have accelerated the, uh, the job increase of product managers by about 30%. If you compare the number of jobs in the US, um, basically the biggest market of product managers still, you see almost like a 30% increase year on year, only basically on the past two years. So this is a big driver. And this is also a good opportunity for a lot of product managers who want to break into this career because definitely there isn't enough existing product managers that can satisfy all this kind of demand. Distributed teams. This is a norm for all roles, but I what is good information and good knowledge for product managers that I have seen product management as one of the almost always yes yes for every remote position. Like if a company has a bit some uh, some doubts about whether to have their engineers or to have their designers in house or to allow for remote, product managers are among the roles which companies are very very comfortable having remote. And it opens a lot of opportunities for organizations to hire product talent anywhere. And again, this is sort of like echoing what Andela is doing now because they have seen this kind of signal from companies and they have seen companies in the UK very, very comfortable working with uh, basically a product manager in Kenya if they have the right skills. And that's actually um, a common trend that we have seen and will continue to accelerate in the next years. Increasing specialization. So as the, the, the product function becomes more mature, we have seen this happening, let's say in software engineering. We started with like a full a common software engineer and then we had back end and front end. Then we had more specialization. We had the blockchain developer. This would happen now in product management as well. There is the growth product manager. There is basically the, um, the, the product owner. There is the, the technical product manager and even another specialization that I've seen happening and I would see, I would, uh, imagine it will continue to accelerate is caring a lot about the domain knowledge as a product manager so it's not only basically enough for you to be good at what you do technically in building product roadmaps devising pricing strategies you need to understand and have experience in the market i see basically roles like fintech product manager being basically on the rise you need to understand how payment systems and payment gateways work it's not enough to be a product manager to every domain you need to specialize as well within a domain so this is a trend that will continue to accelerate. So maybe it is good as you go along to land an industry, to land the market expertise, to land a certain domain where you excel and specialize. And lastly, the rise of product ops. Again, we have seen this in other basically adjacent uh, careers. We have seen DevOps in software engineering. Uh, we have seen basically um, sales op in, in sales organization. Product ops are sort of like the people who are responsible for the tools, the processes, as you have more and more product teams and as the, the function becomes more specialized, you need people who want to glue these basically people together. You need people who work as basically connectors across the organization and own the process because it gets more and more complicated and one person or one function can handle it all. Lastly, closing advice. I know I've 
I've taken basically 35 minutes and I want to give enough time to questions for aspiring product managers. It's key that you invest in your learning. For me, the journey took basically almost a year to basically make the shift from software engineering to product management. And I've done it also like um, uh, to product owner first and then product manager. Definitely it can be accelerated more. And that's why we actually aspire to help product managers get into this in a, in a faster way. Um, join the right team. It's essentially in your first sort of like year as a product manager to be surrounded by good product uh, uh, managers who can be your mentors. Uh, for the current product managers, um, focus on the breadth first in the first like two to three years. Gain basically mastery in a lot of these skills that we have uh, covered earlier in the slides because you need to focus on this kind of breadth first before you champion a specific depth. Otherwise, you feel disconnected. You wouldn't be able to connect the dots between what you are doing on the technology or infrastructure or platform side to what the company can basically make money from. Have a mentor. This is essential for you as a product manager. The role is very complex. It's shifting. Uh, there is a lot of uncertainties. You need to have people who have basically uh, gone through this and maybe have um, sort of like uh, gone it uh, a few years ahead of you. And for companies, invest in reskilling your team. Um, one good and easy, basically, opportunity for, um, for companies to hire product managers is to reskill existing teams into this function. Um, there is basically common transitions from engineering to product management, from product marketing to product management, and basically whoever would have the transferable skills that would qualify him to this role and would have the domain knowledge about how the company works and its industry can potentially be your next product manager. And as a company, you need to take the risk. Um, as, as I'm talking to many, many companies out there who are looking for the best product managers, who are always putting the bar of like five years plus experience, unfortunately, you wouldn't get everyone basically um, uh, with, with this kind of like qualification. So you'll need to take some risk, hire for potential and skill, and not just for experience. This is something that all of us as a company, and I remind myself as a, as a co-founder as well, to always basically think, of that higher on potential and not basically on skills. And lastly, there is basically an opportunity through this kind of like partnership with Andilla. We are working on actually like qualifying more and more product managers that graduates from our program, from our Knowledge Officer Pro, which takes you in a journey of six months where you get access to content, you get access to basically mentors that support you in the journey from amazing organizations around the world. You get basically access to live sessions and you get a lot of job support from us and from Andrella so that you can basically land your um, next dream job in product management. If you have the passion, you have the capabilities and the opportunities around there uh, allows you to. So I will leave it at this point and definitely happy to answer all the questions in the chat. Ahmed, thank you so much. That was uh, just from the comments alone from everyone who's been watching throughout. This has been a really interesting and useful and engaging session. I know I wrote down some notes. I learned a thing or two, most definitely. Um, you answered a lot of the questions that have already come into the Q&A, but I think we can fire through a few of them. There's a lot of interesting questions. Um, but just to reiterate, if you look at the chat, there's a lot of people saying that they really enjoyed it. It's always a good sign when people are asking for the recording and the slides of the session that they want to reflect on it later. And we're getting a lot of that. So just to let everyone know that the recording and the slides will be shared with you via email afterwards. You don't need to pop your email in the chat or anything. We already have it. So you'll get it by the end of the week. So let's jump into some of these questions. We'll take it from the top. If anyone has any questions now, drop them into the Q&A box. It's down to the bottom right. Um, one question that's been repeated a lot is, how do you migrate from being a project manager to a product manager? Very good question. I would say that definitely the migration, although it sounds easy, but it is harder than it, what it looks like. So basically the this is not to push people away from doing this transition, just to basically have it with a bit of a caveat that there is a huge difference between projects and product in itself, um, let alone basically project management and product management. There is definitely a lot of transferable skills. You definitely have good communication. You are definitely an organized person. You manage complex timelines. But the idea of basically thinking about the what and why, as I said, and not thinking about the how and when is a big shift you need to make, is a, a mindset shift and, and, and thing that you need to basically do. Um, but I would say 
realistically, this is basically going to be an easy transition compared to someone who is shifting from marketing to product management or even from engineering to product management because you have a lot of basically what it takes, uh, but there is a lot of like um, uh, skills that you need to potentially un undo and redo. So you need to basically un 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 undo some of the things and some of the, um, uh, the habits. Uh, definitely the general recommendation in this case is to learn go through basically some learnings if you have a mentor have him basically support you if you have access to a program like what we offer at knowledge officer go through um, such program or a different program that you see uh, would fit basically what you are looking for and the types of learning that you have if you are within an organization that will allow you to make the transition internal transfer is the easiest basically option and my transfer has been internal as well and it's always basically better to do it this way if possible that's such a great answer. Would you have a similar answer? There's another question here from Michael, who is a UI UX designer looking to migrate into product management. I assume the same advice would apply. Definitely. I mean, for sure, like the kind of like skills that you would transfer from project management to product management would differ from basically UX to product management. Um, I would say like if you look at even the diagram that we have seen, you, you would basically be mastering, you would need, you'd be on track on some skills that a project manager, let's say, or trying to make would be basically on the needs focused and, and basically vice versa. Um, definitely UX is, is a good um, 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 a step. Uh, you could potentially be transitioning to a product designer as well, which is a different sort of like career, but it has a lot of overlap with um, product management. I would say definitely look at product design, definitely look at basically doing this gradual shift into product design before getting into product management. Um, and definitely a product management transition is available to you as a UX designer. That's great. There's so many questions here. I don't think we'll get through them all before we end this, but I think that's a good sign that we need to do a follow-up session with you soon um, to cover more of these questions. Um, there's been a recurring question about certification. Do people, some people thinking they need to go to, to PMI for a certification to be a product manager? What do you think on that? My answer wouldn't be basically the best answer for this one because I'm, I'm basically anti-certificates in general. Like I believe in the skills that you have more than basically the certificates and lucky maybe i'm not i'm not as wrong in this like a lot of companies now like google are basically taking people without even like basically formal education so i wouldn't basically stop at certificates at all but a lot of companies would look for a signal of trust if you are basically being hired in a product management role for the first time this signal of trust could be a portfolio that you have developed you are going into a lot of meetups and doing talks that are relevant to product management and a lot you are creating a profile this way you have basically helped on your free time some startups who are basically building products and you have wrote about this online so they get to see how you think and how you develop stuff you have gone into a reputable course that will give you the kind of like basically um, a trust that you have what it takes and they have assessed you have scoring but don't care of a certificate as a certificate I don't think a lot of companies are putting as high emphasis as it was as before. That's such a good answer. I love it. Um, it kind of feeds into another question that we're getting. A lot of people are asking about Knowledge Officer, how they join um, your training. And a lot of people saying, you know, for entry level people who've no experience and want to get started down this career path, where do they start? Sure. So uh, just to answer first, how to join Knowledge Officer, you just basically type in knowledgeofficer.com you will see basically the pro program or the career accelerator pro program that um, I've talked about. Um, it's available online. It's a monthly cohort that starts every month at the last Thursday of the month. So it's very, very basically uh, predictable. So basically you go on the website, you sign up, you go through a screening phase because we want to make sure before you that basically we can support you in this journey. Uh, we basically give you job support. So we want to make sure that basically we are up to the mark of our placement rates. So if you pass the screening phase, you get into the next stages and then basically go into the onboarding and you hopefully enjoy a six months for us with us and then you can get connected to our hiring partners whether they are direct companies or and then in this case who can open up a whole set of opportunities for you hopefully great another question that i think is really relevant um for indela obviously because we're placing talent remotely there's a question here asking if someone is new to product management would you recommend they prioritize a role on a remote team or work maybe in person with people? I would say um, 
In 2022, and given what we have seen over the past two years, um, we were all forced to do things that uh, people um, haven't imagined that are possible or basically have looked at them, them at barriers that weren't there. Like, I would give you like a, a clear example, like within us at Knowledge Officer as a company, basically all the team is remote from day one. Basically, we haven't been basically working in an office. We had basically people in Egypt who were going to the office here and there, but for the teams in the UK or for India, we have been all as a remote organization and we are not the first to have done this. There are many, many companies before COVID who have championed basically remote work. I don't think there is anything specific about product management that would make it hard. Um, you need to ask yourself whether you can do it. Uh, because there are people who are more comfortable basically seeing people face to face uh, than working online or they can be productive, but I wouldn't um, relate this to product management as a career by any means. Definitely, hopefully you can master product management um, um, while doing it remotely. That's a great answer. Um, how are we for time? We are bang up on the hour. Um, I'm just going to skim through. A lot of the questions are, are, are quite similar. If we missed anyone's questions, um, you will get an email. So feel free to respond to that email with any questions. Um, you can reach us on Twitter, on LinkedIn. If you're already part of Vendela's Talent Network, um, join us on Slack. Um, if you're part of the Talent Network, you know me and you know you can send me a Slack message. I'll pass on any questions to ask. Um, if, if I can't answer them, I probably can't if they're about product management. Um, I've added also my LinkedIn uh, on the chat now in case anyone wants to ask me um, questions directly as well. And I've added the link to the program on Knowledge Officer. Um, let's take like one lucky question, maybe, Nicola, if you have the time as well. <laughs> okay, let's just do a random one. Let's see. Okay, here's the most recent question we've just gotten. Um, it has been noted that for people in tech roles to move fast in the role, you need a mentor, sponsor, among other things. How can one go about that? How do you find a mentor or a sponsor? Um, I would answer the mentor part. Uh, one of the common things I've seen about every, almost like every senior um, product manager that I've met is that these people have tremendous, basically, um, um, excitement about giving back you would be surprised how these people can help you. Like just pick a company that inspire you in product management. Let it be Facebook, let it be Andela, let it be Google. Look for people within your area that have worked for these companies in the past or now. They have enough years of experience. I would say for you to seek mentorship from a product management. This is even a bar we set for our mentors. Five plus years of experience would give someone good confidence to basically share advice that could be basically strong and solid. Look for someone who's five years of experience in one of these companies in an area like basically uh, that makes sense um, close to you so that the time zone is not a barrier. Reach out on LinkedIn, just ask for help, ask for support, ask for a call. You would be surprised. The call would become basically a friendship and it would become many, many calls. Um, you would be surprised how many of these people have navigated the pain of the transition in the past. And they know basically they are to give it back to the people and help them do this transition in a better and more efficient way. That is a great answer. And that's a great positive note to, to end on. Um, I just want to say on behalf of everyone from what they're saying in the comments, um, thank you so much, Ahmed. This was a really engaging and informative session. Um, I certainly really enjoyed it. So we'll definitely have you back again soon, I'm sure. Thank you really, Nicola. And if you don't mind, if someone from the team can fire up the last, basically, poll, which will help us also like get to know how yeah. much we, we excited people about this job. Um, it, yeah, this is the first, yeah. After web, this webinar, my understanding and interest about product management has decreased, is the same, has slightly increased, has dramatically increased. Um, I hope basically we see more and more uh, good product managers out out there that basically build uh, great products and uh, i'm sure that andela would look forward to basically connect these amazing people to um, all the amazing companies around the world exactly yeah everyone if we could get the same level of engagement on our first poll on this one it'd be really really helpful and um, i can see everyone's already um firing in oh wow has dramatically increased is miles away so that's that's really high High praise and feedback, Ahmed. Uh, we'll just let more people roll in their responses and we'll share the results. But um, over 70% of people are saying that their uh, understanding and interest in product management has dramatically increased. Um, I'm definitely in that pool of people. Thank I definitely you. had some misconceptions and I had my notebook in front of me and I wrote down some, some of your truisms. 
uh, particularly about the product manager being an executive chef of product. I loved that. It's really good. Captures the, um, the balance between creativity and skill um, really, really well. I loved that. And leading by influence, not authority. Like, that's a mantra, I think, for, for many, many fields. So I have that in my notebook now. Thank you, Nicola. Really enjoyed the, the conversation. And thanks for you for your time and again for the kind invitation and um, look forward to always hearing from you. We'll definitely have you back. Let's end this poll now. I think almost everyone has participated. Let's see. End the poll. Okay. Yeah, so we're over over 65% of people are saying that their uh, understanding has dramatically increased. So that's great. Great. Will we... Um, leave it there then and let everyone get get on with the rest of their days thank you so much again Ahmed we'll speak to you soon thank you thank you Nicola and thank you all for listening yeah Have thank you everyone um definitely uh get, get in touch and join the Andela network if you haven't already bye